Hello there and welcome to the introduction to functions video. Here we're going to see what functions are and the basic functions that functions can do. So uh, a function is a piece of algebra that transforms one set of numbers into another set of numbers. So for example it might take the number 3, put it into a function and then out comes a different number and in this case out comes 7. So generally we don't draw the machine out each time, we use a letter, and we generally use the letter F. So F of 3, 3 is the input number into the machine, so F3 is the number that goes next to F in some brackets, and then equals 7. 3 is effectively the input number, 7 is effectively the output number. So 3 goes in, apply the function, and then 7 comes out again. And what we do generally is we use algebra to represent what you need to do to that input number. So for example, with here, the f function is representing take your x number, whatever x is, and then the output is going to be that x number add 4. So for example, if you put 3 in, 3 add 4 gives you 7. If you put 4 in, 4 add 4 gives you 8. And if you put 5 in, 5 add 4 gives you 9. So the function here is to add 4 to whatever x number you started with. So x is generally the num letter that we use to represent the starting number before you've put it into the function or the input number. And 7, 8, 9 in this case here are the output numbers. It's very similar to substituting into a formula. Effectively what we're doing here is we're taking the number 3, putting it into this formula here, 3 plus 4 equals 7, so it's just like substituting into a formula. So let's see an example. If we have a different function this time, functions aren't always x plus 4, they could be something like 2x plus 3. And we want to find f of 5. So we're putting 5 into the function, we want to know what the output is. So this is how we do the answer. We write f of 5 equals, and then we bring in this piece of algebra here, and we replace in this piece of algebra x with the number 5. So just to show our workings we'll write 2 and then in brackets the number 5 plus 3. And then in the next line we'll work it out. 2 times 5 is 10, add 3 is 13. So make sure you show your working and then write down your final answer underneath. Okay your turn to have a go at a few questions then. Pause the video and give these three questions a go. Okay, so when 5 is your input number, what's the output when the function here is 3x minus 5? So what we'll do first is we'll write, rewrite out the function, but replacing x with the number 5. So it's going to be 3, and then where the x number is, we're going to write the number 5. So it's 3 times 5 minus 5, and that gives us 10. So we've put one bit of working and then the final answer. Please make sure you're doing exactly the same. In the next one we want to work out the output when the input is 12. So I'm going to replace x with the number 12 this time. So it's 3 times 12 minus 5. Now 3 times 5 is 36. So 3 times 12 is 36. Take away 5 is 31. And this time minus 2 is the input number. So it's going to be 3 times minus 2, take away 5. This will give us minus 6 and then take away another 5, you get minus 11. So these are the three answers for this question. So it's just basically replace the x with these numbers that are in the brackets. So if we go at another one. In this question we're using the g function, so we're using a different letter here. That's absolutely fine. Uh, generally we use letters f, g and sometimes h if you need a third function. But it's basically the same thing here, it's just a different letter that's g. Pause the video and give these three questions a go. Okay, so same thing as before in this function here, we're just going to be replacing x with the number 3 this time. So it's 20 minus 3 lots of 3, and so we write one line of working and then the answer afterwards, 20 minus 9 is 11. In this question here, it's going to be 20 minus 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24, 20 take away 24 is minus 4. And this time we'll input the number minus 5, so that's going to be 20 
take away minus, sorry, take away 3 times minus 5. Maybe even with this one, we'll write an extra line of working 20, and then minus 3 times minus 5, that will give us plus 15. So the answer here is 35. Let's have a go at another one then. We moved back to the F letter. This is the F function this time. Pause the video and have a go at these three questions. Okay, so in the first one, it's going to be 12 as the input where x is. So it's going to be 12 divided by 4 plus 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. This time we're going to put 5 in where the x letter is. And this time it's going to give us a uh, not a whole number. It's going to be 1.25 here. Add 3, that's 4.25. And with this number here, we're going to do minus 2 divided by 4, add 3. This will give us minus a half, and then add 3, that would be 2.5. Let's move on to the next question. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so in this question, we're going to do the x letter, which is in this case the number 4 minus 2 and then square. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 squared is back to 4 again. Just a coincidence that both of these numbers were 4. In this case it's going to be the x number which is now 9, 9 minus 2 squared, that's to be 7, 7 squared is 49. And then the last one, minus 4 take away 2 squared, the minus 4 take away 2 is minus 6, minus 6 squared is 36 because when you square a negative number you get a positive number. Moving on to the next question. In this question there's two different places where you need to put the number 2, 5 or minus 3. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay so in this case every time we see an x we're going to write the number 2. So it's going to be 2 squared plus 3 times 2. So that 2 number, 2 number here, has gone in every position where there's an x. So in this case it's going to be 4 plus 6, which is 10. In this next question, 5 is going to be the number that replaces both of the x letters. So it's going to be 5 squared plus 3 lots of 5. That's going to be 25 add 15 which is 40. And in the next question it's going to be the number minus 3 squared add 3 lots of minus 3. Now let's just make sure we do this correctly. Minus 3 squared is 9 and then 3 times minus 3 that's minus 9. So this answer here is going to give me 0. Okay, and that's all we're going to go through in the first part. We're going to move on to a slightly difficult part now, uh, which is now composite functions. Okay, so first of all, what does the word composite mean? A composite is a word in English that means a thing made up of several parts. So when you're going for a composite function, it's a function made up of two or more different functions. So for example, if we were to take the number 3, put it into our function and get the number 7 out again, then what we'd do if it was a composite function is we would take the answer 7, put it into a different function machine, maybe the same function machine, doesn't matter, into a different function machine, and we get out a different number. This time we take 3 and we got 49 out again. We use different functions here to um, send our number through. And what we're doing here effectively if we were using letters is we're taking the number 3, putting it into the f function to give us 7 and then putting it into a different function we might call that g and g will give us 49. So if we write that in terms of x's now how would this look with algebra? We take the number x, we'd put it into the f function and we'd get f of x and then we'd take the answer to f of x, put it into the g function and we will then get our final answer. So it's g of this f of x. So this is how it's going to look and what you'll probably notice here 
is that the letters of the function are actually in reverse order. We did f first, but f appears second in the order of g and f. So basically, a good way of remembering it is whatever's closest to the x number, that's the function you do first. So we did the f function first, and then we did the g function second. And there's no reason why it stops at two. You could do three functions, you could do four functions, however many functions you wanted to. So g f of x means do the f function first, then take the answer, and then do the g function second. Now quite annoyingly, mathematicians actually stop writing a lot of the brackets, and it's usually just written as g f of x without any extra brackets around it. So you have to get used to this, is that the letter that's nearest to the x, or the brackets, you do that one first. Just to make this super obvious to everyone then, you do this function first, and then you do this function second. You're reading this in reverse, you're doing whatever function is closest to f first. So closest to the x letter first. If you wish to try and imagine some brackets around this to help you remember it, do what's inside the brackets first and follow bodmas, then you can, but you do have to get used to no brackets being there at all. So, what I'd like to do first is have a go at these, through these two questions together then. So, in the first one, 4 is going to go into the g function. So, I'll leave the f function alone for now. And I'll now work out what you get when you put 4 into the g function. The g function is this one over here. So, if I put 4 in for the x letter, 4 minus 5, that's minus 1. So this is my working at the moment. Now I'm going to find the final answer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the answer to the first part, which is minus 1, and put it into the f function. And the f function is this one over here. So it's 2 times minus 1, that's minus 2. Take away 3, that would be minus 5 in total. So pause the video and have a go at part B, and then we'll go through the answer together shortly. Okay, so in this question here, we're going to put 3 into the f function first. We're going to leave g alone at the start and just put 3 into f. f is this function up here, so it's 2 times 3, that's 6. Take away 3, that's 3 again, just by coincidence. Then we're going to take the number 3 and put it into the g function. g function is this one over here. 3 take away 5, that's minus 2. So there we are, that's the answer to these two questions. Let's see you have a go at these two questions then, pause the video and have a go at these questions. Okay, so with the first one here, we're going to put 6 into the g function first. It always goes into the function closest to it um, in the order, and that 6 is closest to the g function first. So we're going to leave the f function alone, and then we're going to put 6 into g. g is this function up here, and it says to square the x value. The x value here is 6, so 6 squared is 36. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put 36 into the f function. Putting 36 into the f function, here's the f function, it's divided by 3. So it's going to be 36 divided by 3, which is 12. So 12 is the answer to part A. And moving on to part B now, 9 goes into the f function first. So here's the f function, 9 divided by 3. That gives us 3. And then put 3 into the g function next. And 3 squared gives us 9. So 9 here is the answer to part B. Just a coincidence that it's equal to the same number we input at the start. Let's move on to the next one then. Pause the video and give these two questions a go.
Okay, so with part A, there's actually three functions that we need to do here. The first one is the first f function next to the number 2 here. So I'm going to leave the first f and the g alone and put 2 into the f function. The f function is this one up here. 6 take away the number 2 is 4. Then I'm going to put 4 into the g function, the one next to the brackets. I'm going to leave the f one alone here. 4 times 4 gives us 16. And now 16 will go into the f function. 16 take, so 6 take away 16 will give me minus 10. Minus 10 is the answer to part A. And part B, 3 will go into the g function first. I'll leave this front g alone. So 3, put it into this g function up here, which is times by 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And then put 12 into the g function here. That will give us 48. So 48 is the answer to part B. OK, so it's your turn to have a go at some questions from the worksheet in the link in the description below this video. So pause the video and make sure you give that a good go. We're now going to go through the answers and we'll go through it bit by bit. So first of all, pause the video and give these questions a go. OK, so in the first question, we're going to put 10 into the f function. So that's 20 divided by 10. This time the x number is on the bottom of the fraction where 10 goes. So it's 20 divided by 10 is 2. 2 is the answer to part A. Moving on to part B now. The g of x function is this one over here. So we'll write down our workings. Square root, and we won't write the number x, we'll write the number 5 instead. So 2, bracket, 5, minus 1. And now we can work it out. 2 times 5 is 10. Take away 1 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 is the answer to part B. And moving on to part um, C. F of 1.25, so that's going to be 20, divided by 1.25, So that's what the function says to do. The x is on the bottom of the fraction, so we divide by the 1.25 number. And hopefully you've got a calculator and you've worked out that 20 divided by 1.25 is 16. So 16 is the answer to part C. So we go these follow-up questions, D, E, and F. So G of 13, let's put 13 into the G function then. So it's going to be the square root of 2 times 13 minus 1. Uh, 2 times 13 is 26. Take away 1 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 is the answer to part D. Now these are the composite function questions where we have to put 4 into the f function first. So I'm going to leave g alone and 4 going into f, 20 divided by 4 gives me 5. And then now I'm going to put 5 into the g function. So it's going to be the square root of 2 times 5 minus 1 and that will give me 3. 3 is the answer to part e. And moving on to part f, putting 2 into the f function first. So that's going to give me f, because I leave this front f alone. Uh, 20 divided by 2 gives me 10. And now I'll put 10 into the f function, and I'll do 20 divided by 10 gives me 2. So 2 is the answer to part f. Let's move on to question two now, where we have some different functions going on. Pause the video and give this one a go. OK, so six going into the f function. Let's write out some working. So it's going to be the square root of six minus two. Six minus two is four. Square root of four is two. Putting six into the g function. So we're going to put 6 into both places where x appears in the g function. So it's going to be both 6 squared and minus 5 times 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. Take away 30 and we're left with the number 6. Just by coincidence, the same number that we put in. And moving on to 
part c, putting 18 into the f function, that's going to be the square root of 18 minus 2. 18 minus 2 is 16, square root of 16 is 4. Let's move on to part d, e and f, pause the video and give a go at these three. Okay, so putting minus 3 into the g function first then, so we need to put minus 3 into both places where x is in the g function, so that's going to be minus 3 squared minus 5 times minus 3. So let's work this out nicely step by step. Minus 3 squared, that gives us plus 9, and minus 5 times minus 3 gives us plus 15. And 9 add 15 is 24. Moving on to the composite function questions now. F, sorry, 11 needs to go into the f function first. So we're going to leave the g1 alone at the start. And then we're going to work out what it is. So 11 take away 2 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. And now I'm going to put 3 into the g function next. So that's going to be 3 squared minus 5 times 3. 3 needs to go in both x positions. So that's going to be 9 take away 15, which equals minus 6. So I've done a bit of working out here. This bit here and this bit here were both working out bits. Write down some working out if you need to. If it's an easy one, like putting 11 into this one, then don't worry about it. And the last one, question f, putting 4 into the g function first, but leaving one of the g's alone at the start. So that's going to be 4 squared minus 5 times 4. And I'll do some working inside the brackets here. 4 squared is 16. And take away 20. That will give us minus 4. And then putting minus 4 into the g function, so I'll start a new line here. Uh, that will give me minus 4 squared, take away 5 times minus 4. Minus 4 goes in both positions where the x appears. So that's going to be 16. And then minus 5 times minus 4, that's going to be plus 20. So this equals 36. There we are, 36 is the answer to part F there. Let's move on to question 3, pause the video and have a go at these three. Okay, so let's do part A then, so putting 3 into the G function this time, this one's the G function up here, so it's going to be 30 divided by the square root of 3 plus 1. Let's make sure we do this in order, 3 plus 1 is 4, Square root of 4 is 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So the answer here is 15. Let's do part B now, putting 3 into the f function. Bit of a strange function, this one. It's 2 to the power of the number 3 in this case. So 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 8. And putting the number 0 into the f function, 2 to the power of 0, Hopefully you all know that anything to the power of 0 is 1. Maybe you've checked that on your calculator, but anything to the power of 0 is 1. Let's move on to the next couple of questions for part 3. Pause the video and have a go at these. Okay, so putting 35 into the g function, so that's going to be 30 divided by square root of 35 plus 1. So 35 plus 1 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. 30 divided by 6 is 5. 5 is the answer to part D. Now this is a composite question. We have to put 24 into the G function first. Leave the F1 alone. So 24 into this function over here. Let's just write out some working inside the bracket. Square root of 24 plus 1. So 24 plus 1 is 25, square root of 25 is 5, 30 divided by 5 is 6. Now we're going to put 6 into the f function, so that's going to be 2 to the power of 6, and 2 to the power of 6, if you don't know, is 64. 
and let's do part f then. 3 is going to go into the f function first, leave the g1 alone at the start. 2 cubed, that's 8. Already worked that out earlier. Now 8 is going to go into the g function, so it's going to be 30 divided by the square root of 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 30 divided by 3 is 10. There we are. That's the answer to part f. And moving on to part 4, pause the video and have a go at these slightly more tricky functions questions. Okay, so following BODMAS, BODMAS tells you to do the things in the brackets first. So we'll do the 4 first into the f function, and then we'll just multiply the answer by 2. So it's going to be 2 times by, now putting 4 into the f function, 2 times 4 is 8, take away 3 is 5, and then do 2 times the answer to that, 2 times 5 is 10. So do the function bit first, then multiply by 2. In part b, we need to put 2 into the g function, 5 into the f function, and add the answers together. So 2 going into the g function, that would be 4. 5 going into the f function, that would be 7. And 4 add 7 is 11. So that's the answer to part b. And in part c, put 5 into the g function, and then just negate the answer. So it's minus of g into the f function at 25, so the answer is minus 25. And moving on to the final three questions, pause the video and have a go at these. Okay, so follow BODMAS and do what's inside the brackets first, so minus 3 goes into the f function first, so minus 3 times 2 is minus 6, Take away another 3, that's minus 9. Then add the 8 on at the end, and that will be minus 1. This is just a composite function question. Leave the g bit alone at the start. Put, it, put the minus 2 into the f function. That will give us minus 4. Take away another minus, take away 3. That will give us minus 7. And then minus 7 squared, that will be positive 49. And then with this question here, we're going to put 5 into the f function, do the brackets first, 4 into the g function, times that one by 5, times that one by 2, and then subtract. So, let's write down lots of working for this. 5 into the f function, that will be 10, take away 3, that's 7. Two, so, 4 into the g function, that will be 16. Work out the multiplication before we do the subtraction. That would be 35 take away 32. And the answer to this is going to be just the number 3. So there we are. We've done the brackets first. Then we did the multiply. Then we did the subtraction. Just the same as following good old B-O-D-M-A-S. Or bid mass if you prefer it. So there we are. That's the answers to the worksheet there. Hopefully you found that video helpful. Hopefully you've understood the basic function functions. Keep an eye out for the next video where we're doing some problem solving. Thanks very much for watching.